Noble team from Halo goes against Delta Squad from a public commando on today's episode of Star Wars Versus. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Versus. Once again, Star Wars goes up against the Halo universe as Delta Squad from the Republic Commando video game goes against Noble Team from Halo Reach. We'll be taking both of these units as they existed at the beginning of their respective games. For Noble Team, that means after Tom's death but before Six was brought on, and for Delta Squad, we're talking about as they existed at the Battle of Geonosis. There's no real rules for this matchup other than that I'll be considering armor teamwork, abilities, anything that would realistically factor into the battle. We'll start off with an in-depth look at each team and then at the end we'll pit them head-to-head -head and I'll determine which one I think would win more times than not. We'll start first with Noble Team, which is a collection of Spartan 2 and 3 Super Soldiers. Ideally, Noble Team would have a full 6-member roster, however in this battle they only have 5 Spartans. Commanding the team is Spartan Carter Noble 1, who's supported by Kat, Emil, George, and June. All of these warriors other than George are Spartan 3s, but we'll get into that distinction later. What's important now is that each member had a distinct role. George was the heavy weapon specialist, June was the sniper, Kat was intelligence and tech, Emil was close quarters, and as I stated, they were all commanded by Carter. The team was able to work together extremely effectively and due to their time together was very close. They also had state-of-the-art radar, communications, and HUD systems which allowed them to work seamlessly as a single unit. All Spartans on the team, whether 2 or 3, shared several common features. Heavy physical augmentation, Mjolnir power armor, and unparalleled human strength, durability, endurance, and reaction time. That being said, the quality of the soldier does vary somewhat depending on whether it's a Spartan 2 or 3, so let's take a second to look at the differences. Let's take a look first at the Spartan 2 program. And remember, there was only one Spartan 2 on this team, George. Spartans were, by far, the best soldiers ever created by modern humanity. The program, although extraordinarily unethical, was also very effective. It started with the kidnapping of very young children, children who already stood out amongst their peers. While only 6 or 7 years old, they were pushed beyond their limits, given the best training and education possible, all to make them into tools of war. However, that was just the beginning, that was just some Ender's Game level stuff, where things really got got serious was the biological augmentations. These augmentations were so invasive and so serious that with the first group of Spartans, less than half were able to successfully fight afterwards. However, those that survived by their teenage years were already the best soldiers ever seen by humanity. They have incredible speed. John 117 in one instance was able to sprint 100 kilometers per hour. They're able to lift thousands of pounds and generally would likely have a low double digit millisecond reaction time. This this produces an effect known as Spartan time where things seem to be moving in slow motion. Remember that's all for Spartan 2s. Things for the 3s were a little bit different. Oni was much less selective when it came to the Spartan 3 process and there were a lot more Spartan 3s than 2s. They were supposed to be a sort of cheap alternative. However, candidates were still taken quite young and by this point Oni had actually perfected the Spartan augmentation procedure, seeing almost no casualties. And it actually seems like despite the cheapness of the program, Spartan 3s weren't actually that much of a step down after the augmentation when compared with their Spartan 2 brothers. The real cheapness was actually in the armor that the Spartans were given. Spartan 2s were typically given high quality Mjolnir armor, while Spartan 3s were given SPI armor. However, that distinction doesn't exist here as the whole team is outfitted with full powered Mjolnir armor. That brings the abilities of the Spartan 3s closer to that of George and also suggests that these Spartan 3s were among the best of the best. We know that June was one of the greatest human snipers ever, and although Noble 6 isn't actually in this matchup, he was a Spartan 3, but only the second Spartan ever to be given the Hyper Lethal designation. Speaking of Mjolnir armor, we should probably talk about its effects. It not only increases the reaction time, strength, speed, and skill of the wearer, but also has a protective energy shield. I don't think it's possible to overstate just how much more effective this armor makes a Spartan. All in all, the whole getup weighs over a thousand pounds and is powerful enough to break the bones of any non-Spartan who tried to use it. Weapon-wise, I think things are a little less interesting for the Spartans. They do, however, use top-of-the-line projectile-based weapons, including sniper rifles, mini guns, shotguns, and other various rifles, sidearms, grenades, etc. Let's move now to Delta Squad. Thankfully, this will take a 
a little less time than Noble Team, as Delta Squad is all made up of literally the same person. Delta Squad was made up of four clones of Django Fett. There was Boss, who was, of course, the leader. Fixer, who was, again, as the name would suggest, the computer's expert. Sev, Delta Squad sniper. And Scorch, who was the explosive and heavy weapons expert. Delta Squad was made up of clone commandos. Now, you might joke and say that Spartans are trained from birth, but clones literally are. From the moment they're born, clone troopers are trained to kill, and not only that, but they're actually trained with their squad. There still is, however, a hierarchy within the clone corps, and I think clone commandos are at the top, or at least near. All members of Delta Squad would not only have been given advanced training, but also personal one-on-one -on -one time with Jango Fett and other Mandalorians. Delta Squad showed their incredible effectiveness and teamwork abilities during the Battle of Geonosis and subsequent events of the Clone Wars. Each clone was capable of taking down hundreds, if not thousands, of battle droids, and as a unit, they changed the course of many major battles. Again, much of this is tied to the fact that these clones lived and worked together since they were born and were literally bred to do one thing only, to fight. These clones were the ideal physical and psychological specimens to fight a large-scale war. However, again, I really don't think I can overstate the brotherly love and the closeness of this clone unit. Clones made use of Katarn class armor. Now, Katarn armor saw several upgrades throughout the war, but for the purposes here where we're taking the squad at the Battle of Geonosis, they'll be using the first variant. The armor is light at less than 50 pounds, but offers a good degree of protection, including a personal deflector shield. Besides for that, it of course had duraplast armor, and the helmet had a heads-up display which allowed the clones to communicate even more effectively. Weapon-wise, the squad made use of the DC-17M interchangeable weapon system. These were fairly standard blasters, however the notable thing about them is that they could be easily configured on the go to be used as different weapon types. For the purposes of this battle, the clones will have access to the blaster attachment, the sniper attachment, and the grenade grenade launcher attachment and can make free use of all of them. It should be noted that the DC-17M is an energy based weapon, it seems to be relatively effective against droids and organics, although it can't kill either in a single shot. With all of that out of the way and I think a good understanding of these two teams, let's now take a look at the actual battle. So I think both of these squads have their own distinct advantages. First of all, the clones do appear to be top of the line humans, however both Spartan 2s and 3s enter the realm of superhuman. I think that they are much stronger, much faster, and their reaction time would be significantly increased. This is all made worse for the clones by the fact that Spartan armor increases these attributes by a noticeable amount. On the other hand, clone armor doesn't seem to augment the senses or abilities of clones in any sort of way. So we have Spartans which are already in their base form, more physically gifted than clones, further improved by their armor. Now when looking at the mental side of things, I don't think Spartans are any more tactically intelligent, although their use of Spartan time and their insane reaction speeds do help. And I think that Delta Squad has a huge advantage when it comes to teamwork. I mean, we see in Halo Reach that, at times, Noble Team doesn't quite get along. Now, I don't think that that would be an issue in battle, however the clones have been together their whole life. Noble Team is comprised of Spartans from different companies. I'm sure they work very well together, but the whole brotherly love thing that the clones have is really an important intangible in my mind. With all of that out of the way, I think it's fairly clear that if the two sides were to fight butt naked, the Spartans would take it 10 times out of 10. They are incredible physical specimens superhumans and they have an extra member. How then does the equipment play in? And this is an interesting one. I think the blasters used by the Republic Commandos will be very effective at taking down the shields of the Spartans. However, throughout the Halo series we learn that energy weapons, while good at taking down shields, aren't quite as effective at burning through Spartan armor. Now, blasters may be more powerful, but I think that general relationship will still exist. Spartans use projectile based weapons, which are fairly outdated for the Star Wars universe. The clones are specifically equipped with a particle shield which will help protect them against bullets. However, in the Republic Commando game, the Trandoshans do appear to use projectile based weapons, and those can injure the clones. While they can be injured, I think generally when it comes to a weapon matchup, the clones do have a fairly significant advantage. However, Spartan armor is also very heavy, 20 times heavier in fact than the Katarn
current armor used by the clone commandos. I really think the difference in scale here cannot be ignored. So, what do I think would happen here? Well, I actually think it's fairly clear. The Mjolnir armor and the Spartan augmentations are far crazier than anything given to the clone commandos. Commandos are incredible warriors and Delta Team is probably as close as any four men can get. However, I really don't think that's going to save them when they get blitzed by the Spartans. They may have more effective weapons, but in the end, I don't think it will matter. The Spartans are just that much better. They're stronger, faster, quicker, more durable, they have a better reaction time, and all of this is further increased and improved by their armor. The Spartans also have an extra member, and it's 5 against 4 here. However, I really do think that even 2 soldiers from Noble Team would have a decent chance at taking out the 4 clones on Delta Squad, however, I can't say so definitively. All in all though, I do give this battle to the Spartans, and I think they win 8.5 times out of 10. The remaining 1.5 represents my confusion and a little bit of hesitation regarding the difference in shield and weapon technology. That however is just my opinion, let me know what you think down in the comments and my voting in the upper right hand corner. If you'd like to support the channel consider following me on Twitter, joining the Discord and supporting me on Patreon. Until next time this has been Eckhart Slatter, may the force be with you.